Okay, I know it's been a while since I uh, did anything with the flintlock build, but uh, I wanted to christen the and the new anvil by making a new hammer, new fancy hammer on it. New fancy hammer's done. Now, I found the center where I want to drill the hammer. I've been doing lots of cleanup up top here. And you can see I cut a notch right here for this part. I've been doing some cleanup on here. I, I cleaned up where I it twists or I twisted it. And I've been cleaning up the back face, smoothing it up, and I gotta smooth up this some more. I got the whole center punched where I want it to be. I got this. I've been doing some peening on this to help raise that lip up. I'm gonna do some more peening on this. But I think what we're gonna try is I got these these gaps right here. Right in here from welding where the bar mushroomed on top. I'm gonna fill the I'm gonna try and fill those in with solder and we'll flatten that all back out. So that way no powder can get in there and just poof, straight back at me. Now step one is to clean out in this crack as good as you can. Get it all down to bare steel and I've got a file here that's checkered all the way up to the edge. So I'm going to use that, mainly the corner, and get this down to bright steel. I also have some needle files that I'll also be using to get down in there. Okay, so needle files. These are triangular needle files to really help me get down in there. But, uh, I'll save you the tedious filing. Just, just make it bright steel. Nice bright steel like this. So you have my workpiece well illuminated. And we're not trying to make this smooth. We want to leave all the, the file scratches. That'll help provide a mechanical bond for the uh, solder. And I think that's pretty good. Okay, I've got some acid core solder. And because this stuff doesn't melt at a very high temperature, we'll just be using a map gas torch. I got impatient and map gas was taking too long, so we switched over to oxygen and acetylene. I put regular borax on the joint. Okay. Uh, just melting in the flux, or er, melting in the solder. we go one terrible solder job okay this is cooled down enough for me to start working it again it ain't the prettiest but it'll work to keep powder out that's for sure Well, kids, don't do what I did. I drilled the hole in the wrong spot. I thought I saw my center punch mark, but apparently it wasn't. So how I fixed that was I drilled it out to a quarter inch. Then I put in a piece of rod and uh, I countersunk the, the edges of the hole on both sides. And I just peened it with a, a, a small ball peen. And then to get into here, I actually had to use a ball end punch and peen it around into that countersink. Filed it flush and then drilled again on my center punch mark. Now it is time for tapping.
And the size tap you use is kind of arbitrary. Use whatever you got, so long as it'll perform the function you need. It's a relatively low stress application anyway. So I will tap this and come back to you. Now this still needs lots of work here, but as you can see the only light we got coming through there is right here in the pan or the, the flash hole. That's exactly what we want. Okay, the reason why you see light is because there, there's a little lip of the pan or a little bit of the pan peeking out there. I gotta take that little ball peen and peen this up flush and file it flat with the bottom of this to help seal up that indentation that I made too long. Now, I'm thinking for the spring I can get, I can just make a V-shaped spring that goes like that with a short leg on top that'll ride on a nub here. Probably this, this nub here, file this flat. So that way it anchors here, the little nub rests on this, which provides the tension for the spring, I mean the tension for the pan. And then the long leg will come back to the hammer. Okay, we got the screw hole for the hammer drilled. Again, drill and tap size is arbitrary, just as long as it's strong enough to do the job it needs to do. Now you can see, I found the center, and then from there, I place this so the flat, the top of this bottom jaw here is in line with the concave. And then I just scooted this back until I found where it sat best. That feels good. I selected the right drill this time. Using metric tap and dies on standard drill holes and standard stock sizes. You're gonna need one of these set of calipers. Preferably some digital ones like this that have inch decimal, fraction, and millimeter. That thing is handy. Now, here I'm using a seven millimeter tap but the hole in this is 10 millimeter or 3 eighths of an inch. And that's the drill I used. So the plan is to neck down some 3 eighths stock to 7 mil and use the die on that to match these threads here. So that way it runs on a smooth bearing surface. The hammer runs on a smooth bearing surface. But I'm gonna finish tapping this hole and I think we will call that good for now. All right, we're gonna make the screw for the hammer. Basically, we're just upsetting a bunch of metal back into itself to make this a big ball. And then we're gonna drop that into here and squish it to make the head. Okay, there's enough material. Now we will cut some off so it can. we have less to drop through the header.
see our bolt is coming along. And here is the top. Of the head. Now it's a little off center. And I think it's a little too big for the it'll overhang the hammer a bit so we can we'll need to trim it down a bit, which is fine because there's a bit of a, a concave on the back side. We've got to get rid of anyhow. But We'll cut a slot in this later. Now we're gonna neck some of this down to seven millimeter for tapping. Now we're gonna use the guillotine tool to neck down to seven millimeter-ish. Okay, now we will take our calipers and check. And we are at eight and a half millimeter right now. So we'll just keep repeating that until we have seven millimeter right here. And we can file this nice and smooth, make sure the smooth part fits into the hammer nicely, glides freely. Then we can work on the head and thread the, the shank. Okay, we've got this taken down to about seven and a half millimeter. And I'll use this opportunity to smooth everything up with a file before it's ready. So I'm going to smooth this up for threading. I'm going to smooth this up. This is pretty smooth already from the heading tool we used. So I'm going to take, this is a bastard file. I'm going to take a, a, a single cut file, put a nice smooth finish on that. I'm going to take a bastard file and then, like I said, take off this chamfer on the outside edge and then we'll cut a slot in it a little sticky yet a little more filing on the shank much better But you see, we still got that oblong we got to get rid of. Now, before I cut this off the bar at the transition here, where I want to start threading, I'm taking a half round file and shrinking down the end so that way the die can start easier. I've cut down to that shoulder. Now what I'm gonna do is flip my die over because it's got a really tapered side for getting the, uh, the thread started. And you fl flip it over to the other side where it's not so tapered. You can get threads closer up to a shoulder like that. We're cutting up close to a shoulder like that. Make sure you clear your chips frequently. Otherwise, you'll just keep binding up against them. 
and not cutting anything. You'll be just be tearing metal. And that's it. Maxed out. Go. Looks like I got some play in here. I need to take some of that shoulder off. But. It's looking promising.